Hi everyone, this is Nurse Ryan, and today we're going to go over some practice questions for antihypertensives as an introduction to pharmacology. In this quiz, we'll review some of the basics, including beta blockers, ACE inhibitors, and more. I'll walk you through the answers and rationales for each question. Starting off with question number one, a client asks the nurse if he is allowed to continue taking calcium supplements after being prescribed a calcium channel blocker. An appropriate response from the nurse is... And for each question, I'll leave a bit of a break in the video where you can pause and think about the answer. So the answer here is A. Oral calcium supplements generally have too small of an effect to interfere with calcium channel blockers. That being said, intravenous or IV calcium may interfere with calcium channel blockers. It is important to teach the client about the appropriate monitoring and reporting of blood pressure to ensure client safety. And question number two, which of the following drugs will inhibit the breakdown of bradykinin, thus causing vasodilation? And the answer here is D, ACE inhibitors. Part of the function of ACE inhibitors is to inhibit the breakdown of bradykinin. Bradykinin is an inflammatory mediator which causes vasodilation to decrease blood pressure. Moving on to question number three. Blank is a common side effect of antihypertensive medications, which should be monitored for carefully, especially in elderly clients. And the answer here is C, orthostatic hypotension. Antihypertensives reduce blood pressure and, as a side effect, can cause orthostatic hypotension, which is a decrease in blood pressure when rapidly changing positions. For example, quickly changing from sitting to standing can cause a large drop in blood pressure. Question number four, a client has been taking an antihypertensive medication for several months. The client's blood pressure has been dropping steadily from 145 over 90 down to 125 over 80. The client is very happy to see these results and would like to stop taking his medication. An appropriate response from the nurse is... And the answer here is B. It is important to continue taking your blood pressure medication even after an optimal blood pressure has been reached. Blood pressure medication should not be stopped abruptly due to the risk of hypertensive crisis. A blood pressure of 125 over 80 is adequate and indicates that the medication is working and therefore should not be stopped. If the client is experiencing unwanted side effects or if the blood pressure drops below an adequate level, then the physician should be made aware. Question number five, blocking the receptors on juxtoglomerular cells causes... And the answer here is A, inhibition of renin release, causing a decrease in blood pressure. Juxtaglomerular cells are found in the kidneys and are responsible for secreting renin. Renin is an enzyme that helps to raise blood pressure. By blocking juxtaglomerular cells, renin release is inhibited, resulting in a decrease in blood pressure. For more information about renin, I'll link my video on the renin angiotensin aldosterone system in the video description. And question number six, ACE inhibitor stands for... And the answer here is angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor. This is the correct response. ACE inhibitors inhibit the enzyme responsible for converting angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Question number seven, which of the following statements is true? The answer here is D. Dihydropyridines and non-dihydropyridines are two types of calcium channel blockers. Dihydropyridines generally have more vascular selectivity, causing more vasodilation, and non-dihydropyridines generally have more cardiac effects, causing more cardiac depression. Moving on to question number eight, which of the following corresponds to the first generation of beta blockers? The answer here is C, non-selective. First generation beta blockers are the non-selective beta blockers, which inhibit both beta one and beta two receptors. And our last question for this quiz, number nine, primary hypertension has a clearly identifiable cause, while secondary hypertension is idiopathic. The right answer here is B, false. Primary hypertension is idiopathic, 
meaning that the cause is not directly known and could be related to things like stress, diet, and others. Primary hypertension is more common than secondary. Secondary hypertension has a clear identifiable cause. An example could be kidney disease that is causing hypertension. And that's it for the anti-hypertensive quiz. If this video has helped you out, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. If you have any questions or would like me to review a specific drug or topic, please let me know in the comments and thanks for watching.